and his boys, you see, never in church. Not a, not a one. Not once in his lifetime. His children's grown and married now. Did he ever pray one prayer with them? They never saw a Bible in his home. They never took him to Sunday school church a time. Well, the boys got up. They got off into different trouble. He said to me one time, Uncle, I said to me one time, one of the youngest boys said, and this don't sound big now, but brother, you take depression days, $10,000 is a fortune. Because you could buy a loaf of bread for a nickel and a gallon of gas for 9 to 12 cents and buy a brand new Cadillac for eight seventy, eight hundred and seventy five dollars Now, you young folks, that sounds far-fetched, but that's the truth. And buy a Ford for five six hundred dollars Ten thousand dollars. He said, "On just on one of them, I've spent ten thousand dollars to keep him out of the pen." No wonder they went raised upright. And then the time came that he just couldn't spend anymore. Just couldn't spend anymore. So I was in one time. Actually, I was pastor right close McKinney, Texas, my hometown. I was pastor over at Farmersville, Texas, smaller town in Collin County, fifteen miles east of McKinney. And I went over to McKinney to attend to some business and I went by to see my mother. And my mother said, son, pray for Uncle Larry. Well, I'll be honest with you, through the years I'd prayed many times. I'd fasted and prayed for my kinfolk. If it ever did any good, I couldn't tell it. I know now after, after I saw it, I saw why it didn't do any good. It's all out of line with the Bible. Yeah, you can fast and pray and do everything and be out of line with the Bible and never work. Amen. And so she said, I haven't seen it, but said, they tell me, that he's lost so much wor- wor- weight. See, worried about these kids now. And you couldn't just say, well, that's good enough for him. But you know, God's not going to say that. He loves him in spite of all of it. You couldn't say, well, he's just reaping what he sowed. That's good enough for him. And you know, actually, I'm going to get a little closer. Actually, I've had full gospel Christians. I know they say filled with the Spirit sometime or another. I put a question mark about now. But I've had them in talking about other people this way. And even other people in the church that backslid, you know, and got into wrongdoing, and then things happened, you know. And I've had them say, well, now, that's just good enough for him. One fellow said, ha, ha, I'm glad of it. That's just good enough for him. But you know that church member's in the worst shape than the backslider was. I haven't got enough sense to know it. My mother said, pray for Uncle Larry. They say he looks so bad, I haven't seen him, but he's lost so much weight that you won't recognize him. Just looks so bad, he don't look like himself. Well, I said, I'll do it. And I went my way, tended to my business. I started home in the afternoon after banking hours. And I had to go right in front of his house because that's the way the highway went. They didn't have any freeways in those days. And I saw a man walking from the back. And I said to myself, that looks like Uncle Larry. I've got to go right in front of his house. I'll stop and pick him up. But as I got close to him, you see, and looked at his face, I didn't recognize I said, no, that's not him. Went on by him. I didn't recognize him. As I looked to his back, I said, that's him. I said, you know, walk like him. But when I got up beside him where I could see his face, you see, I, I, I didn't recognize it. And I went on by about two blocks. And it suddenly dawned on me. Mama said you wouldn't recognize I said, that was Uncle Larry. To get a little air, he'd just walk, you see. He had a car, but he'd walk home from work, you see, from the bank. He didn't live all that far. And so I said, uh, and so I was so overcome, I just, I, I said, oh, God, with tears. I said, oh, God, save Uncle Larry. And I was in the car by myself, but it was like somebody was sitting in the back seat and said, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and I whirled the car over and parked it over against the curb. And I looked back there to see if somebody got down behind the seat. <laughs> and I sat there startled for a minute. I said, well, dear God, you know what I mean? I realized the Lord had spoken to me. That's what I'm trying to do. Save somebody. Well, that's why he sent Jesus. And then it all came up before me. I saw all those times that I'd prayed, days that I'd fasted, all in vain. I saw why it didn't work. He said to me, I never did tell the church to pray that the lost would be saved. I told them to pray to send laborers. I said, oh, my God, I see it. I've wasted all of these years praying, just flat wasted years. Sat down in the car, I said, dear Lord, I know him well enough. He wouldn't listen to me. I'm probably I couldn't influence him. Somebody can. Send somebody across his pathway. You told me to do it. You, you, you intend to answer it or you wouldn't told me to do it. You said pray. 
that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest. Send a laborer across his pathway. I don't know who it is. You know who it is. Thank you for doing it. Amen. Cranked up my car and went on. Bless God. Happy. Never prayed anymore. Oh, a couple of weeks later or so, I was back over, you know, and stopped by to see Mama. Mama said, you know, Uncle Larry bought him a Bible. He's going to church. Said somebody talked to him. First Bible ever been in his house. He's reading it. Praise God forevermore. I remember on one occasion since we've been here, I'd heard that he'd, you know, because he's getting older and he had an operation. All, they said he almost died. They thought he died. They give up on him. So my wife and I was going through McKinney. We stopped at the hospital and I went in there. He's still very low. Wouldn't let me in long, you know. He took hold of my hand and said, I'm glad to see you, Ken. He said, you know, they thought I was gone, but he said, you know, I got peace. Wasn't afraid. I'm ready. Praise God forevermore. Now, 15 years of praying and fasting off and on didn't get the job done. One little prayer, according to the word, get the job done. Are you listening to me? Listen well and listen good. Listen, be an everyday affair. And you'll love the Lord and worship and honor Him. For you see, He hears and answers prayer. That's what the Spirit of God said. I spoke that by the word of prophecy. Blessed be God both now and forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Well, we know the Word. The Word's given to us by the Holy Spirit. But then, in things that we don't know, for what to praise we ought. Thank God the Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit knows. I said the Holy Spirit knows. Hallelujah to Jesus. We don't always know, but He knows. He knows how to get the job done. Praise God. I remember one time I was in, you know, just between meetings at home there in Garland, Texas. And I was awakened. Remember Brother Wood, the pastor, who was pastor, then our pastor of the First Assembly of God in Garland. He said, he told me later at the same hour he was awakened. He, said, he thought somebody was in the house. I thought somebody was in the house. I got up and walked through the house and checked the doors and they're all locked. So nobody's there. I came back at 5 o'clock in the morning, laid down on the bed and said, Dear Lord, you must have awakened me. What is it? What is it? Something's wrong somewhere. Brother Wood told me after he had the identical, the same impression. I, I, I felt like it was my mother. She was older, actually. I could tell him what she said, but that she's very, that something happened. So she said, it's your, it's your mother. And they were calling. And the head nurse said, she's dying. Well, I said, I'll be there and said, to the last thing she said before she became unconscious, call Kenneth, have him to pray. But see, the Spirit of God already alerted me. When you're depending upon him, when you're depending upon him, when you're trusting him, he understands and knows. i got to work in agreement with him. He and I are buddies. We're pals. The Holy Ghost and I. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so, I got ready as fast as I could and rushed over there. And there the... The head nurse was there. They was giving her oxygen. The nurse said to me, she'll, she'll never regain consciousness. She's dying. She's just as good as dead right now. She'll never regain consciousness. But the last thing she said before she lapsed into unconsciousness, call Kenneth, have Kenneth to pray. Well, I guess she thought I was going to pray, but I didn't. I reached over, laid my hand on her forehead. I said, Mama, but there's no answer. But they take the oxygen off of him. So they took the oxygen off of him. And I said, Mama, there's no answer. I said, Mama, there's no answer. And I called a little louder in her ear, Mama! And her lips began to move just a little bit. I mean, never did. Her mouth was open, you see, and her eyes were sort of set in death like. But you could see, you know, they began to move. And I got near down and I said, Kenneth, 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 Kenneth. You know who this is? Yeah, she said, it's Kenneth. I said, come on back. It's not time for you to go yet. Didn't pray, he'd already prayed. The minute I said, come on back, it's not time for you to go. Like you snapped your finger. She just revived us, all right? I went by that afternoon before I went off to me. She's sitting up by the bed in a rocking chair. Throw a rocket, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Now when she'd hit her 80th birthday, and I'd said to the Lord, he and I had quite a conversation about it. We was way up in the state of Oregon. And they phoned that mom was in serious condition. So I, I phoned back and talked to Brother Wood because sometimes my sister, you know, people can get things all out of proportion that's emotional. 
So Brother Wood said, yeah, I'd, I'd come in. She wants you. I don't know. She depended on me. So 